kids learn it too. One is heliocentrism. This is something you'll learn here. Who is Nicholas Copernicus? And this I'll also share. For over 1500 years, ancient man thought the earth was the center of the solar system. That was what was taught. This theory was called the geocentric model shown here, which means the earth was the center of the universe. I do share. But in the 16th century, things began to change. A man named Nicholas Copernicus did decide to rearrange. He introduced a new and at the time crazy theory, placing the sun or soul in the center of the solar system you can see this new theory of the solar system revolving around the sun was called the heliocentrism model to say it is so fun in the 17th century his idea did take hold when evidence was compiled by these astronomers was told Tycho Brahe, Johannes Kepler and Galileo Galilei you see used different strategies to prove Copernicus's theory Tycho used parallax measurements and shot for the stars when he did this, he recorded data when he focused on Mars. Johannes Kepler used Tycho's information and found this. The orbits of the planets and Earth were ellipses. Galileo Galilei used the newly invented telescope to see far to discover the Milky Way cloud were actually stars. Galileo also learned that the sun had spots on it. I sing, this indicated the sun was definitely rotating. All this info proved that the heliocentric Centrism model was right. From that point on, it was accepted all from staring up at night. What is heliocentrism? This is something you'll learn here. Who is Nicholas Copernicus? And this I'll also share. A year is the time it takes the earth to make one revolution around the sun. How long do other planets take? My name is Mercury. The first planet in the solar system i take 88 days to orbit once around the sun my name is venus the second planet from the sun i take 225 days to orbit it on my run i'm the earth the planet that all life lives on i take 365 days to orbit the sun my name is mars i'm the fourth planet in line i take 680 Seven days to orbit the sun one time. I'm the fifth planet, my name is Jupiter. Have fun. Twelve Earth years is the amount of time I take to orbit the sun. The sixth planet from the sun is called Saturn. That's me. Just over 29 Earth years is one orbit around the sun, you see. Uranus is the seventh planet in the solar system. 84 Earth years is the amount of time I take to orbit. Jupiter, our 12 additional new moons, bringing Jupiter's total moon number to 92. Jupiter reclaims the title of the most moons in the solar system from Saturn's 83 moon count as it orbits the sun. The internationally recognized minor planet center is responsible for the identification of all these moons, I am sure. These new moons were found using Saturn's 83 moon count as it 
planets, not the solar system. How fast can an airliner go around each one of those four fun? An airliner is a commercial jet that carries passengers. Jets can fly 575 miles per hour for sure. Earth's circumference is the distance around me, which is around 24,901 miles you can see. Not the solar system How fast can an airliner go around each one of us for fun? Mercury, my circumference is over 9,500 miles To fly around me once would take 16 hours in this trial Venus is over 23,000 miles in circumference It would take an airliner 41 hours to fly around me once Mars has a circumference of 13,200 miles Flying around me once would take 23 hours, that's a while we we are the planets, not the solar system. How fast can an airliner go around each one of us for fun? It's 272,000 miles around Jupiter. Flying around me once takes 474 hours for sure. Saturn's circumference is 235,000 miles around. A jet flying around me once takes 409 hours I found. 99,000 miles is Uranus' circumference shown here. A jet would take 173 hours to fly around me once I share. Neptune's circumference is 96,685. Once around me takes 168 hours of stride we are the planets not the solar system how fast can an airliner go around each one of us for fun what would happen if the earth had two suns let's take a look at the earth with a binary star system a binary star system is two stars that are Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. But if both stars gravitational pull was weak, the Earth would float off into space. The situation is unique. The Earth would turn rogue and travel the universe, frozen over in ice with no life on the Earth. But if the Earth only orbited one of these stars, that wouldn't be good due to its orbit around the star. Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. If the stars were orbited by Earth at a safe distance, how far would the Earth have to orbit for life to exist? Earth would have to move past the current Goldilocks zone. That's the safe area we orbit our sun for life to grow. If this happened, water wouldn't be in a liquid state. The entire planet would freeze. That wouldn't be great. What would happen if the Earth had two suns? Let's take a look at the Earth with a binary star system. Thanks for watching KLT. Please subscribe to this channel, like our videos, and check out the KLT merch store.